How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 1, Part 2 Celestia lets out a sigh as she overlooks her empty bed. Things have been far different than she expected them to be when Anon decided to live in Canterlot. She walks past her bed and into the hallway. She thought that maybe they would be able to spend more time together, but then she found out that he was opening a candy store in town. The first few weeks were fine, but then he became popular. That seemed to change a lot of things between the two of them. For the past few months, Anon has barely spent any time with any pony, other than the mares that he works with. Celestia watched from afar as he came back to the castle, too tired to even walk to his room. She can count all the times that she wanted to speak to him, but held her tongue for his benefit. He's been working so hard and she wishes that she could help him in any way possible. Yet, there was nothing she could do. Even if she could, she knows Anon would have turned down any help that she would offer. There are some things that don't change, and Anon's stubbornness is something that she's come to accept. She finds herself already sitting upon her throne, as she does every morning. Another sigh leaves her. She misses his company. He seemed to make her days feel brighter just by being by her side. The most that she's ever gotten out of him is a good morning whenever they cross paths. He doesn't even eat dinner or breakfast as far as she knows. He just comes here to sleep and then gets up to work. It hurts her deeply not to have him near. Facing the day alone just reminds her of a time when Anon wasn't around. Days that she wishes to forget. Perhaps she can visit him? N no, that wouldn't be wise. He's already popular. If Celestia were to go to his candy shop, then the chances are that he wouldn't even get time to rest his head. She hates this so much. Anon is her friend, and yet her title keeps her from him. Her heart aches when she thinks about him. How much fun they have, even when it's just the two of them alone in her sitting room enjoying some tea. And the feeling brings her joy and agony in this time of loneliness. Your mind weighs heavy, sister. Celestia jumps in shock. She looks up to see Luna standing there. Luna, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Do you need something? She asks. Luna shakes her head from side to side. It is not I who need something, Tia. Celestia feels her wither slouch. I know. She rubs her eyes some. But there's nothing I can do about it. You know I've been visiting Anon in his dreams. Why do you choose to stay inside of your own realm? Celestia looks off into the distance. She would never tell her sister the truth, but her mind is a punishment of sorts. Her dreams are usually violent and filled with the many regrets that she's made in her life. She feels if she were to forget them, then they're bound to repeat. However, those dreams seem to subside when Anon was constantly around. Now they've returned in full force. I do not like leaving my mind, Luna. You have the power of the moon and control over dreams. It would feel wrong of me to try such things. It was challenging enough to reach out to the moon and move it. She isn't lying, but it's not the entire truth either. I understand. Luna says with a nod. Anon has been talking about you, asking how your day's fair and how well you're doing. Celestia looks up to her sister with interest. He does? Luna nods. Truly. He worries about you almost as much as you worry for him. Celestia can feel a certain smile grow on her muzzle. It's nice to know that she's not the only one who worries. That's good to know. Luna walks up to her sister. How are you faring? It seems that with each passing day you become less responsive. Celestia hangs her head. I just miss Anon. He seems to make my taste bearable. Luna smirks at that. I must say that he does have a way about him. Have you thought about visiting? Celestia nods. I have, but I don't want to put more stress on him. If I were to show up at a store, then his business may go tenfold. Luna shakes her head. I doubt that, sister. Anon shop is so popular right now, if he asks his customers to overthrow you, there's a chance they may comply. Celestia finds herself giggling at that thought. She will admit that when she ate his gummy worms, it was an experience that she will never forget. However, she hasn't partook in most of what Anon has created, not because she didn't want to, but because she wasn't sure if that would make Anon feel uncomfortable. He always gets nervous when others take in what he creates, even if he never shows it. His creations are truly one of a kind, aren't they? Luna nods. They are. I think you should go and visit him. I've done so, and he was overjoyed to see a friendly face. Celestia can feel her heart aching at Luna's words, almost as if it's calling out to do what she says. Is this right? Should she really risk going to see Anon? If all Luna says is true, then Anon really wants to see her, and could use the company while he works. Anon used to sit by her side when he came to her court, so why shouldn't she return the favor? Celestia nods at her sister, as she rises from her throne. You're right, Luna. I think it's high time that I visit Anon. Luna gives her sister a nod, as she takes her seat on the throne. I will remain here till you return. Celestia gives her sister a smile, as she makes her journey to Anon's shop.
She stops briefly to cast a glance at her sister. Luna has grown over these past months thanks to Anon. Not only that, but the ponies that see her sitting upon the throne no longer show her fear. Celestia must admit that she's grateful that Anon pushed them as far as he did. She can see the joy on her sister's face as she helps their subjects. Celestia turns back around and walks out of the throne room. She should hurry. Wouldn't want to put this off for longer than needed. Celestia looks around Canterlot with her princess mask on. All of the ponies on the street are bowing before her as she walks past. Has she ever mentioned how much she dislikes this? She looks over to her side, expecting Anon to be there, but he isn't. An internal sigh is all that comes out of that thought. She returns her gaze to the buildings as she scans for the address Anon gave her all those months ago. She knows it should be around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Celestia takes a minute to look over the shop. She must admit that it's rather plain-looking for a candy shop. Most of the food-oriented stores go out of their way to make themselves look flashy and the like. It makes sense that Anon wouldn't like a store to look like that. She can practically feel the professionalism oozing from the very walls. He does what he does well, and that's what this building represents. Enough standing around, she can practically feel her hooves trembling at the thought of seeing him again. She walks up to the door and opens it. A ring comes from the small bell hanging above the door. All of the ponies in line turn around. Their eyes grow wide as they see their princess standing behind them. Celestia decides to ignore this as she looks over at them and towards the register. It's the mare from before, Lyra. She pushes away a certain uncomfortable feeling that builds inside of her whenever she thinks of that mare and what she's tried to do to a non. Lyra instantly notices the princess, but seems to be stuck in shock. She wasn't expecting to see Celestia come to the shop today. And again, no other pony was expecting the same thing either. There's the next order, Lyra! Anon says, coming out from the back with a bag in his hand. Anon notices the vacant gaze Lyra's giving to someone in the crowd. Anon looks over and notices that all of the ponies are looking at something. He continues down the line until he spots what everyone is looking at. Celestia's here. He can feel a certain smile grow on his face as he walks from behind the counter and up to the princess. He doesn't pause either, as he wraps his arms around her neck. <laughs> Long time no see to ya, he says. Anon ignores all of the suppressed gasps that he hears from behind him. Celestia can feel her princess mask disappearing at Anon's sudden hug. She rests her head onto his shoulders as she wraps him into her wings. She missed this. She missed this so much. Her heart aches, but it doesn't ache for the reasons from before. She isn't really sure why it hurts. The both of them break from one another. Celestia's smiling at Anon as he smiles at her. I know. It seems like it's been ages. Celestia says. How's the shop been? Anon chuckles. How about we take this somewhere private? Celestia gives a nod as she looks over the room and notices that every pony has their jaws on the floor. That seems wise. Anon waves her to follow, as he walks behind the counter and into the back kitchen. Celestia follows after him, but once she walks past the double door, she feels her eyes widen as she looks at the kitchen. There are ponies everywhere, each of them working on various things. She must say that this reminds her of the time that she walked into her kitchen in Canterlot. So many ponies focused on creating things, the constant sound of cutlery being used. She could swear that these ponies were hard at work on the finest restaurant in Canterlot with how determined they looked. And they stopped when they noticed Celestia standing there. Anon quickly catches their attention. Keep working, boys! Anon yells. Training isn't over yet! They get back to their tasks, as Anon waves Celestia to follow him. He briefly stops near Bonbon. Bon. So, what's the count for the Bonbons? Count us over a thousand. She answers. We're holding steady on all fronts. Anon smiles. Good to hear. Keep an eye on them, I've got company. Do you mind if we use your kitchen? Bonbon bon shakes her head, never looking up from her paperwork. That's fine. Anon turns to Celestia. Let's go to you. He walks through another set of doors, and Celestia follows him. When she walks through these doors, it seems a bit of a shock. This kitchen reminds her of Anon's kitchen back in Ponyville. Very plain and minimalist. Just a simple stove, countertops, cupboards, and a fridge. A stark contrast when compared to the kitchen that they just walked through. Tea? Anon asks, and Celestia regains focus. That would be lovely. Anon waves her over to a seat as he works on the tea. Celestia can feel her heart swelling in her chest as she watches Anon make her tea. It reminds her of all the times that they've spent together. She can feel that same old smile on her muzzle as she enjoys this moment. Anon turns around and sets a saucer and teacup in front of Celestia and takes a seat across from her with his own cup. So, what brings you around? Anon asks. It's definitely been a while since the two of them sat down and talked to one another, so he intends to enjoy it as much as he can. The words Luna spoke to him this morning still floated around in his thoughts. I thought it was high time to see how things were going for you. Anon's smile grows larger. They're going better than expected. Celestia takes a sip of her tea. 
Her heart swelled once more as the taste hits her lips. Anand made it just the way she likes. However, her mind finds itself pulled away from her tea. There are many questions that she wishes to ask, but one in particular has her attention. May I ask why there are so many ponies in your kitchen? Celestia asks, curiously. Anand grins at that. That's why it's going so well. We managed to hire a bunch of ponies. We've been spending the last week or so teaching them how to prepare everything. Celestia feels her heart leap into her throat. Her thoughts come to a sudden halt as everything he said registers into her mind. D does that mean... His grin grows. Yeah, I'll be having a lot of free time on my hands soon. He lets out a sigh. Just in time, too. If I had to do this any longer, I would have probably had nothing more than stumps for hands. Celestia is beyond happy to hear this. Anon will be getting free time. This means that she'll be able to spend time with him again. If she were a lesser pony, she would be giggling like a little filly right now. Ain't nothing wrong with hiring a couple of people to have more free time. If you work yourself that hard to the bone, you're gonna be mentally and physically hurting. But eh, we all know that. Anyways, let's get on to our very intelligent donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Twinkie. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, CrazyGuller557, Stu Hex, Swordbrother and Mortred, Omicron Lebre, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hatch, RuinSlife9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hudson Norman, Stephen Bingham, Langa12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more heartwarming people. Thank you all so much for watching this video on Live Life to the Fullest.